Okay, welcome everyone to the August 12th meeting of the Haverford Township Planning Commission, our first in-person meeting for the year. Um, Maggie, could you call roll, please? Present. Here. Yeah, I'd ask everyone to stand and join in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Okay, thank you for that. And uh, before we get started, I just wanted to introduce our newest member of the Planning Commission. This is her first live meeting. So, Julia, welcome. Good to see you in person. First item on tonight's agenda is the subdivision of 111, 115 East County Line Road, DN Investments, LLC, Joseph Durazio. And Mr. Dennis O'Neill from McCombie's Herbert McCombie's office is here to present the plan. Uh, good evening. I'm going to try to be brief tonight. My uh, allergies are kicking up and my laryngitis is uh, hitting me pretty good. So um, this is a property at uh, 111, 115 County Line Road. Um, it's on the southerly side of County Line Road. Uh, which is a state highway. It's approximately 1,200 feet east of Haverford Road. The uh, property is bounded by uh, residential properties to its west. It's uh, bounded by residential properties to the east. And behind this property to the south is the um, polo ground play fields. Um, there is uh, one half of a 36 foot wide right of way that was granted to the polo grounds from this property, which provides access uh, to the polo ground. The other half is on the adjoining property to the, to the east. Uh, the site is uh, 53,000 square feet, about 1.2 acres net of the right of ways of the state highway and the polo ground access. There is an existing house and detached garage on the far east side of the property. Um, and we have prepared and submitted and had approved a grading permit. Mr. Durazio is in the process of uh, remodeling that house and adding an addition to it. And there has been some stormwater management designed for that plan that we're presenting tonight proposes a three lot subdivision. <clears throat> Lots one and two are proposed to be developed with single family uh, dwellings, attached garages, uh, patios, uh, and the necessary stormwater management and other driveway improvements uh, necessary to support a single family home. Um, as noted before, this lot contains uh, an existing garage, uh, which is detached into the rear of the lot. It has been noted um, in your review letter and both uh, and on our plan that it is not conforming uh, it, with respect to uh, its size. I think the ordinance requ requires a maximum size of 625 square feet. We're at 656 square feet. Um, and the applicant has decided that we're going to remodel this garage to make it conform. So we'll be removing um, the wall closest to the, to the uh, polo ground access, moving it in away from the property line and making the garage conform to the size requirements of the zoning ordinance. Yes, and we'll move that line. Yeah, we're about three point 
3.4 feet now. So yeah, we're gonna move. We're gonna just move it to its five foot line, and that'll take up the extra square footage that we're we're over as well. These lots are located in an R4 zoning district. Um, we these lots will meet all of the area and bulk zoning requirements for an R4 district. In addition to the area and bulk of the R4, we've calculated the median setback, and all of the properties will comply with the median setback requirements uh, required in your ordinance. Construction is proposed to uh, begin once all permitting is obtained. We will require uh, PennDOT permits for the driveway accesses for lots one and two uh, to the state highway. The plan, as it's been presented, has requested several waivers. Um, the first waiver is to the uh, right-of-way width, which requires a 50-foot right-of-way, and the state highway right-of-way is currently 33 feet. We're also asking for a waiver for the cartway width of 27 feet. Uh, the current state highway is 24 and a half feet in this area. Uh, we're asking for a waiver to provide a curb in the state highway as no curb exists in other areas of the state highway. <clears throat> we're asking for a waiver requir uh, requiring the requirement for street lights there are existing street lights on Pico poles um, in front of the site. I believe they're marked on the plan. And we're asking for a waiver to allow us to go through a two-step, uh, go through a single step of the, rather than the two-step preliminary final uh, requirements. There's some uh, waivers we're asking for for tree removal, which we uh, want to discuss with the or tree replacement which we want to discuss with the shade tree commission there's some existing trees along county line road that we want to leave which would limit us the ability to put in all the required street trees right did you mention the waiver for sidewalk i did mention the waiver okay. for uh i said curbs i didn't say so yes we were asking for a waiver for sidewalk and um that's my presentation. I can answer any questions that you might have. We did get the review letter dated August 10th. We've reviewed it, and we believe that uh, we will comply with all of the comments in the, in the letter. Uh, now that we've decided that we'll make the garage conform, which will save us a trip to the zoning hearing board. Thank you. Before we get started on the letter, could you just point out on the plan where the existing streetlights are? Sure. Okay, so that, that's across the street, correct? Yes, that is across the street. And there's also one I see up by the uh, opposite the driveway into the yes, ball fields. That's correct. Okay. So, yeah, if you don't mind, would you just go through the review letter? Sure. Comment number one is the zoning comment about the garage. And as I've noted, uh, we are going to reduce the size of the garage, uh, moving it to conform with both the size and the setback requirement. Uh, we 
are in the process of um, collecting our approvals for capacity for to address comment number two, uh, which requires sewage facilities planning. And this is in the Cobbs Creek watershed? Yes, it is. Um, comment number three deals with the with the uh, street trees. As I've noted, we, there are two existing trees which we want to keep, which would allow us to reduce the number of street trees that we need to provide. In addition to that, there's um, a number of trees in the in the rear of the site, uh, which which are to remain uh, on the site in the, in what we're dedicating as open space. So um, we think that there's some some compensatory value to keeping those trees that we'd like to talk to the Shade Tree Commission about. Comment number four is the tree protection zones, and we will show them on um, the grading plan and the landscape plan. And we'll add a note indicating that a permit is required for any tree over 24 inches in diameter. <clears throat> Six, we're, we know we need to go to the Shade Tree Commission. Are you, are you on their agenda for August, Dina? I don't believe I'm on their agenda for August. Okay, so you won't be seeing them until the end of September. Yeah, I, I would need to check with Kelly. I did submit plans, but I haven't got confirmation that, that we were on their agenda. Uh, comment number seven has to do with um, our open space is uh, isolated to the rear of the lot. Um, we looked at the ability to connect it behind the garage. There's about 10 feet back there. We could connect the open space out to the um, access road. The access road does allow for pedestrian access as well as vehicular access. Um, so we think that would satisfy the requirement to, to have access to a public right of or public roadway. Um, we've also looked at fee and lieu of for the open space. This, this open space would be a dedicated open space, deed restricted, but would be under the control of the property owners as it's currently um, configured. <clears throat> Stormwater management comments. Um, We have it, we'll add a note to the plan indicating that um, the limit of disturbance has to be clearly defined so that it doesn't go over an acre. And if there is more than an acre of disturbance, an MPDS permit will be required. Uh, yes. Uh, comment nine is a question regarding some elevations of the infiltration basin and the depth of uh, the infiltration basin on lot two. We looked at that today. I think there's some uh, cleanup that needs to be done on the drawings. We can also drop uh, basin two down a little bit. and It'll still function as we want to make sure we have adequate cover over the facility. Uh, comments 10 and 11 are um, drafting notes that need to be changed to match the stormwater management calculations, which we will do. Um, all of these lots are serviced by public utilities from County Line Road, so we'll show the locations of the gas and electric, even though PICO does pretty much what they want to do, regardless of what's shown on the plans. We'll relocate the topsoil stockpile area so that it's away from the uh, seepage beds, and we'll add notes indicating that grading drainage soil erosion control permit and uh, BMP maintenance contributions and agreements will, will be required. Our comment 16, um, we will confer with PennDOT uh, regarding the requirement for additional right-of-way. I know that PennDOT um, very rarely accepts um, additional right away unless they absolutely need it for uh, their roadway. <clears throat> we'll review
view of the site distance, we did take into account the trees along County Line Road uh, when we were looking at that, but we'll we review that and we'll show the uh, proper site triangles to demonstrate that the trees are not in the site distance. Uh, blocking the vision. Uh, we'll note on the plan the document that established the 35 foot right of way. Um, we're going to take a look at the grading that's in proximity to the existing. Yes. Before you leave number 18, is there a document that dedicates that right of way to the township? Oh, no. It's, there's, it's a private. It's a private easement. It's a private easement to who? It's a private easement between the two property owners, or actually, yeah, two property owners and the owner of the polo grounds. Okay. Is the township the owner of the polo field? Not to the best of my knowledge and belief. It's owned by the Brenmar Playfield, Brenmar Playfield Association. Okay, so so you're saying that that strip of ground is not a right of way; it's an easement. In the deeds, they call out as a right of way. We've labeled it as a right of way. Legally, it's probably an easement, not a right of way. Okay. I have a deed with me here. Um, I only have one. Yeah, and um, we did a lot of deed research for this um, back to eighteen ninety because this, these legal descriptions, the tax maps describe two parcels. The legal description, there is a legal description that even calls out two parcels, but the legal description back to the eighteen ninety still only describes one piece of ground and never tells you where that line is in between it. So it appears based on the reading of the deeds um, back that it's always been and always considered one parcel. And that's how we found the right of way language as well. Right. Do, do we, do you know who the present is? Is there an actual group or person that owns the all of, you know, I, I can't answer that question. I don't know. Okay. I just know who it's titled to. Okay. This is referring to the access drive, correct? Yes. Right, okay. Yeah. All right. You're on 19, then. Um, the township engineer has asked us to look at grading on lot two, which we will do. Um, it just needs a little bit of tweaking to uh, provide some additional slope to make sure it runs off and that there's no ponding. We'll add a PennDOT street restoration detail, which would be required for the gas and electric <coughs> and sewer connections. Um, we'll put a note on the plan confirming that there's no basement sewer being provided. Change the uh, signature block to say recommended. And we'll show the Haverford Township, Delaware County uh, boundary on the plan. Okay. Um, I'll open it up. For questions from the planning board, uh, Julia. Um, I guess just to start, on lot three with the approved addition that doubles the building coverage, it wasn't noted on our plan, but is it still under the 30% building coverage and 45% impervious surface area? 
Yes, it is. And if you look at a sheet one, there's a table on sheet one that has the three proposed lots. And lot three proposed is the build out condition, which was approved. Um, the second question is, even though this is an R4 district, the block of houses in this area, the lots are a little bit further spread apart and they have a larger frontage than the R4 minimum. And I was wondering if to minimize the disruption to the street and the sight lines and some of the things that you could do with trees, it, if you would ever consider mirroring the house on lot two so that they could have a shared driveway. Um, in the past, the township has not preferred shared driveways for maintenance and long-term issues like that. Just curious. All right, that was all for me. Existing cartway of 24.5, uh, it would be, okay. I'm not aware of any. I don't know when they were taken down. That's correct. I don't believe I'm required. Now, I think we've only notified the Haverford Township residents. And you sent out the letters that were supposed to be sent out? Yeah, and Joe has the receipts. Oh, you do have those? Make sure you get them to us before you leave. There's a setback issue. It wasn't wasn't noted in the letter. We are aware that it was not conforming with regard to setback. Well, your ordinance um, has a requirement for detached garage structure to be 625 square feet, and this is a little bigger than that. If the ordinance actually says garages shouldn't be more than 25 by 25, and that equals 625, and this is what, 28 by 23 or something? 28 by 23, yeah. I mean, you do the math, there are a few square feet over. And by the time we take off what we need to get back to the setback, we're going to be very close to that 25 by 23. Sure, if you look on, there's a landscape plan sheet uh, four, I believe. So that plan shows, don't mind that.
I, I didn't quite follow your comments on the accessibility. I, I understood the accessibility to lot three would come from the uh, road to the polo field, the driveway to the polo field. Right. Well, what I would do is have an easement across all three lots that would provide access to them. But in, in reality, the property is not going to be public land. It's going to be owned and owned and deed restricted to the, to the private landowner. And I, we are contemplating a fee in lieu of, and in the past, the, the township has required me to demonstrate that the lots could support the open space if necessary. So that's why the plan shows the required amount of open space. Thank you. Maggie? So we were just talking about the open space to piggyback off of that one. Um, I think because lots are directly adjacent to Polo Field, the provision of open space as a deed restricted uh, portion of the lots is somewhat redundant. And so my recommendation would be the fee in lieu rather than provision of actual open space. Um, these lots will be able to have direct access to their rear yards to Polo Field, which is one of the largest fields that we have, recreation centers that we have in this area of the township. Um, I myself am a nearby resident um, up in this ward, and I just don't feel that um, having a deed restricted portion of these lots is going to be the most benefit to the community. I feel that a fee in lieu is a more suitable choice uh, for this provision of open space for these properties. Um, so I would uh, make that recommendation to the Planning Commission um, and to the applicant. Thank you. Um, the other couple of things. So I had a similar thought um, as Julia did about the, the potential driveways. Um, being a resident of this, of this area, I take a lot of walks. I do walk down this roadway. So the fact that we're not going to be providing sidewalks, especially adjacent to the access road to Polo Field, I recognize that there's no other sidewalks nearby, uh, but I would be interested to see if that would be feasible given the, the conditions along the, the roadway. Um, and then relating to the cadence on the street of the different types of lots that presently exist, uh, the proposal creates three kind of narrower and deeper lots, whereas I would agree with Julia that the lots um, in the surrounding street uh, tend to have wider street frontages. The homes are obviously older, and I have significant concerns about the architectural design of these homes and the fact that it so prominently displays a garage and parking area in the front of the house, whereas the rest of the houses on the street have really nice front facade, porches. So do you have an architectural rendering of the, of the property? Thank you. Um, while that's a beautiful render rendering, notwithstanding, I still feel like this is a not suitable for the architectural history of the rest of the homes on the street. I would certainly prefer to see something that's less garage heavy in the front. Um, speaking to our historical elements of the township, um, and I know you know certainly having a driveway that goes back to the rear of the home to service the rear garage add some uh, additional impervious coverage. I feel like that would just be more in keeping with the historical character of the community, uh, would provide just a nicer, uh, something to walk past other than looking at cars and garages uh, parked right in front of the house. The house is secured by the car function. Um, and so that's just not necessarily something that I look for in new development, infill development in such a historic um, and beautiful portion of our township. Um, otherwise, I also have some concerns about the loss of the street trees. Can you speak a little more to the number of compensatory replacement trees you're providing on the, for the lot? Yeah, there, uh, excuse me. There are, um, there's two issues. There's the street trees, 
which would require seven trees along the, the right of way. It's every 30 foot. Uh, and there's two existing ones, and we're showing a third one. There's actually a small one to the far uh, western side of the property. Um, so it would end up being four street trees in lieu of the seven. The other trees are, or we, based on what we're showing to be removed, we were required to provide uh, 55 inches of trees at uh, a ratio of one inch for every four inches we're taking down. Uh, we're, pro we're proposing to provide 37 and a half inches of new trees. I could, I could adjust that number. We're showing it the minimum ordinance requirement of two and a half inches. For a tree, I could put a three inch tree in, three and a half inch tree, and that would increase the, the, the caliber inches that I'm replacing. Um, but they're just, I don't believe there's room in the back of the lots to replace the trees that we're, that we're taking down. And we're concerned about future um, sight line issues with a tree every 30 foot on the, on the, the frontage. Is there any sort of um, additional, so lot one has a number of existing trees that look like they're going to remain, is that correct? In the rear portion of the In lot, In the rear portion yes. of lot one. Is there any additional buffering that's going to be provided between the rear of the home and the play field? There is not. Okay. Um, and then looking at your infiltration beds, Am I reading this correctly in that we have infiltration basins on both lots one and two in the front and in the rear yards for stormwater is, management? That is correct. Is, are these uh, stormwater retention basins going to be subsurface infiltration beds? Yes, they are. And is there going to be any sort of deed restriction on them or anything uh, noted to the homeowner to restrict any sort of future construction on top of uh, areas, for example, if they wanted to put in a pool or deck or a shed or anything, would those be noted need uh, to be restricted from future uh, disturbance? We are required to record a stormwater management operations and maintenance agreement with each lot. And will the individual property owners be responsible for keeping up the O&M agreements that they have? That is correct, yes. And what kind of reporting will there be to the township on those O&M agreements? I believe in your O&M agreement, the township is responsible to inspect those at least once every three years, which is part of the $2,200 fee that we're supposed to, supposed to pay. Okay. I think those are all the questions that I have for now. I might think of something else though. Thank you. Thank you, Maggie. Rob? Uh, I agree with Maggie's concern about the historic character of the architecture and also the placing of the residences on the site in that they're they're back to back uh, they don't have it, the the rendering looks very deceiving in that when you see the spacing here with lots one and two they do appear to be very narrow and the entrances to the houses uh, just seem to be very cold and that if they opened up to each other and they faced each other, in other words, a mirror image so that there's one, not necessarily a shared driveway, but the entrances to the homes face each other rather than be back, back to back. Um, the other issue I had was I noticed in the back of lot three, uh, there are no provisions for yard drains in that there are for one and two. Uh, I was just curious, they're not required? No, when we, when we did the stormwater management for lot three for the proposed additions, it only required a basin in the front, which is rather large basin in the front. And the grading conveys the water around the house to the yard drain in the front. 
Yeah. On the, the lots two and th or one and two, there's a significant area draining down through lot three, which isn't captured, which I'm trying to deal with on lots one and two. Okay. I have no other questions. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Um, I agree with Maggie. I think this uh, would be more appropriate to have a fee in lieu of the open space provided. Would Mr. Drazio would be willing to post that fee in lieu of the open space? I think it'll make a cleaner uh, project for you and a lot less issues for the homeowners. You know, and it's it's roughly nineteen thousand five hundred dollars that I calculated based upon the area the uh, cost per acre that the ordinance required so if you're okay with that I prefer that you eliminate the open space and just have it part of the lot mm -hmm. okay. um, the other thing is is the sidewalk uh, I understand the reason why you want to ask for a waiver but um, w actually the township was in the process of modifying their ordinance to require sidewalks, okay? It, not make it a, a discretionary thing, it, make it a requirement. So uh, given that fact, given the fact that uh, we're in close proximity to the ball field, and I drove down Caroline Road, and I'll be honest with you, that's really a narrow road. It is. Way, you know, with the vegetation and where they have the white line, the edge line painted, you know, you have barely 10 foot of cartway to drive on. So from my perspective, I prefer to see the a sidewalk installed. And if you're going to do a sidewalk, then you got to meet the township requirement as far as its position in relationship to the edge of road. And for safety purposes, you know, I think you should put the curb in protect the sidewalk you know, basically you're you're pushing the sidewalk into the lot far enough where you probably have to provide some type of easement or additional right-of-way to and encompass the sidewalk area and, and we have looked at and we've done in the past in this township a pedestrian easement which allowed us to put the sidewalk that, in without increasing the right-of-way that's fine if, if 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 you're comfortable with doing an easement Cross private property, that's fine as long as the easement describes the maintenance requirements uh, for the property owners as well as giving the residents of the township, all the residents of the township's right to use that. But I, I just think, uh, again, because we're thinking, we're, we're talking, we've talked about changing the ordinance that a sidewalk would be required. The only, the only comment I want to add to it is, it is a state highway. I understand. You know, I'm, I'm really under PennDOT's jurisdiction here. So putting a curb and sidewalk there has to be approved by them as well. I understand. So I need to deal with their, with their design requirements for, for the area. And how do I deal with the quote unquote safety issues of just having a sidewalk start and stop? That's something I'll have to deal with with PennDOT. Right. Maybe um, uh, you could at least have an initial meeting with them and let them know what, where the township's coming from. Right. I know in many cases, PennDOT will defer to the township's wishes when it comes to small things like this. You know? right. the, other, the other is storm drainage. If I put curb in, now they're going to make me put some storm drainage in, most likely. Um, Isn't there a grade along that section I, of Candleline Road? There is, but the way the lots are, there's a, there's kind of like a high point almost where the driveways enter the lots. Really? And it kind of drains across the lots, not down. So the, the water, for the most part, is channeled down the roadway and down the, down the side of the road. So... Um, and, and I've graded it such that I'm not putting water out to the road. 
so I would have to, I'll have to look at PennDOT's uh, requirements for that as well. And as you know, with PennDOT today, any new storm sewer systems that you put in the state highway, the township has to be co-applicant and it gets, it gets confusing and long and drawn out. But I will, I will meet with PennDOT and discuss it with them. All right, maybe, I mean, maybe, I mean, if you put the curb in, you're only widening the road a foot or two, I think. And if you maybe cross slope from the curb back to cross the sidewalk towards the lots, it'll take care of that drainage issue for you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I really would like to see some type of documentation on the plan regarding that right of way into the polo field, okay? Okay. Um, whether it's some type of notes or, or references to deeds or whatever, I just want to make sure someone's interests are protected in that regards. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll do that. And I still am trying to understand who owns that, the ball field. And, and I, if I'm not mistaken, isn't the parking lot for the ball field primarily behind these properties? Or is that, no? No, it's to the east side. To the east side, okay. Um, and then also on the, the front yard setback, and we've had this discussion before. Uh, my opinion is, even though R4 requires 30 feet, another section of the code that supersedes that. And I just think it's appropriate to show the front yard setback as being 55.7 feet from whatever right of way line we end up with, okay? I don't want anybody coming back in the future saying, well, we can build up to that 30 foot line. That's fine. Okay. It, it's, the, the zoning ordinance, the one section of the zoning ordinance that requires that additional setback, I believe supersedes what the other sections say. Okay. Chuck Faulkner, do you have anything you want to add? I do. Just a couple of things that I noticed while you guys were talking. Dennis, the two street trees that are remaining are on lot two and lot three, correct? That is correct. Um, lot two looks like the line of sight for the driveway goes right through the one, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at it. The and then my question on lot three is that proximity to the basin, and it also looks like it's it's in a sight triangle from one of those driveways. I, I think it's drafting. Okay. It's a symbol, because if you measure the circle of the tree, it's much larger than the diameter of the trunk. Understood. But I will clarify that. Okay. Um, and I think that was it, really. Oh, I'm sorry. The basins, I, I didn't quite understand why, why they were so shallow to start with. I just don't need the storage. Okay. So I didn't want to have to dig a large hole in the ground and fill it with stone. And you're able to get everything to there with adequate cover and, and no issues? Yeah. Okay. I, I will look at your comment regarding the lat 2 slope to the the basin yeah particularly the driveway it looks like the driveway the longitudinal slope on the driveway is really it mild. is yeah it is so, i'm okay. trying to keep the water coming back on to the site but yet drain it off to the basin as well understood. before it gets halfway down the driveway understood that's everything i had angela i mean you, from what i saw in your your drainage analysis and your infiltration testing, you tested at a level much deeper, like three feet deeper than where the basin's going. So do you intend to go back and double check the infiltration rates at the higher elevations? Um, I'm gonna look at the soils, the soil profile, right, and see if the soil profile is the same that high before I agree to test it again. Okay, you okay with that type of analysis, Chuck? But many of the times what we do is have them put a note on the plan saying confirm the infiltration during construction. 
So that way, if, if they're confident that they have that, all they got to do is run another test while they're, before they build the facility. If not, it would probably be prudent to do another test right now. Willing to put that note on the plan? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And we'll look at the, the we'll look, I'll look at that distance between them. Okay. What's the, I'm sorry. What's the note that's been on? That at the time of construction of the seepage beds, they'll do additional filtration testing to confirm the infiltration. I see we have one visitor. If uh, you would like to make any comments or ask any questions, you're welcome to. Yes, you? No? No? Mr. Durazio. Thank you. Uh, my name is Joe Durazio. I'm the uh, one of the principals at Deanne Investments, also a township resident. Uh, I also live not too far from the property. I'll, I live on Highland Lane. Um, just wanted to say, I understand your concerns about the properties looking, fitting into the neighborhood. And we do, every project we do, that's our biggest concern. When I do something, I want it to fit in the neighborhood. I want it to look like, you know, it conforms with the neighborhood, which is the reason why we're going to be using uh, mica stone. There's a lot of those houses in that area or gray mica um, and siding. Uh, it'll be cement board siding, but so just want to let you know, I, I agree with your concerns about making it look like it fits in the neighborhood. Um, that being said, I'd like you to think about the sidewalk and curb only because it just looks horrible <laughs> in the neighborhood. I understand the safety concerns. Uh, it's not a question of money. You know, I think the market right now can bear that cost as the reason I uh, accepted the fee in lieu of, so I can handle that cost. I just think it would just look horrible to have that beautiful county line road with all those nice houses, and then you walk into 200 foot section of curb and sidewalk. So. We, we can only recommend to the board of commissioners and right. they don't always uh, follow up on our recommendations. So um, whatever we recommend, you certainly uh, can make your arguments to the commissioners in, in that regards. It's just that the last time we went through this, uh, it, it, it came to light that we should re be requiring sidewalks regardless. So that's that's what kind of like our marching orders are. Mm -hmm. okay. but no, I understand. You're welcome to, to make your point with the commissioners. Great. Thank you. Anyone else have anything they want to say? No. Okay. All right, uh, Dennis, we're going to table this for tonight, okay? We got a lot of little things to clean up. Again, one of the mandates is that we pass plans on to the commissioners that are relatively clean. Mm -hmm. So um, if you want to go ahead and make all the changes we talked about and all the notes of the plans that we discussed, uh, and uh, if we can get a relatively clean letter next time, we can pass it on then, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, the next item on the agenda, I think, is our minutes from our last meeting, which is in May. I'm assuming everyone had a chance to review those minutes. Anyone have any corrections or adjustments they want to make? Hearing none, uh, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes from our May meeting. Second. I have a motion, second. Uh, all in favor is signify by saying aye. 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 Everybody voted aye. So the minutes are approved. Um, before we adjourn, does anyone have anything they want to bring up or ask or talk about?
while we're all here. Who knows if we'll be here next time? No? Are we, where are we going with the uh, conference plan? I know that was just put on oh. hold. Yes. Because of the pandemic. So I'm curious to see if that's making any headway. Kelly, Kelly was going to give us an update on that, but okay. I, I can do that. Uh, the Comprehensive Plan Committee, uh, Steering Committee, has started their meetings. Again, we met in July. We're meeting again in August. And there is a, uh, a general meeting that's going to be open to the public, kind of like a workshop session, which I have tentatively scheduled for June 20, no, September 22nd at the Crick. And, and basically, based upon the uh, interviews that were made with key, red, key people in the township, uh, based upon the questionnaires that were, were uh, filled out by residents, there's going to be like six or seven stations which address various issues related to future development, if you will. And, and the idea is that there may be a general presentation at this meeting, but the idea is everybody who comes to the meeting can go and visit each station and give their, put their two cents in. And, and then once that's done, then, then we'll proceed with the normal, there'll be a public hearing here public meeting with the commissioners and things like that. So we're trying to wrap the comprehensive plan up by sometime next year, I would think. Spring, summer time frame. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Angelo, will that meeting be those separate tables? Will they be by topic or by yeah. area? By topic. It'll be like transportation, future development, things like that. Okay. Will there be a draft? A draft of? No. I'm sorry. A draft of a? There'll probably be some type of announcement made so that people know that it's coming about, and they'll probably have in there some of the topics that'll be discussed. I would imagine that's the way we're headed with things. And that'll be on the township website. Uh, I don't know how else it'll be. Uh, promoted through through the township. There might be a newsletter sent out or something. But that's 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 where we are with the uh, schedule anyhow. And I, I say that meeting is tentative for June or September twenty second because with this COVID thing you don't know where anything's gonna go. Just have to wait and see. But that's our that's our plan for now. Okay, I'll uh, someone want to make a motion we can adjourn? that we adjourn the meeting second second it's moved and second all in favor aye aye thank you